Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's reiteration of our quick conversation series. Um, today, we're focusing on kind of that full circle after talking about uh, consumers and those folks that buy our uh, from the farms. And so today I am joined by Angela Anderson and Josh Luth, who are DMI employees and plus two to our farm team. So uh, before we get started, go ahead and kick it over to Angela. If you want to introduce yourself, Angela. Hey, good afternoon. I'm Angela Anderson, Vice President of Food Chain Outreach for Dairy Management Inc. and the Innovation Center for U.S. Dairy. In my role, I serve as the conduit between food service, retail, and CPG companies um, to help them understand dairy social responsibility and in essence, really where the farm program sits um, with our customers and their sourcing policies. I reside in San Marcos, Texas, which is down in the South Central part um, of the United States. And I'll turn it over to Josh, my colleague. Hi, I'm Josh Luth. I'm the director of Food Chain CSR Engagement. Uh, just like Angela, her sidekick, I do reside in Bourbon, Wisconsin, right in the center of the state. Um, you know, with that, uh, I think I've been a part of the farm program for many years, myself being an evaluator, working for a co-op, but also a dairy farmer. So I'm excited to, to be presenting today. Thank you for having us. Thank you both for joining us. And for those folks who may not know, I'm Beverly Hampton Pfeiffer. I'm the stakeholder relations manager for the farm program. If you're new to this quick conversation series, these are... Um, these are conversations uh, that we have aimed to share with folks, kind of the ins and outs of different farm program initiatives. We try to bring different subject matter experts on um, for these about 30 minute uh, 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 information sessions that are Zoom via Zoom and Facebook Live. Uh, we really strongly encourage you folks to who are listening in to share and ask questions of our guests on this series. So if you're on the Zoom side, feel free to put in comments or questions in the chat or the Q&A feature. If you're listening over on Facebook, um, please just put those in in the comment box and we'll try to get those if time allows at the end. We do try to keep these to 30 minutes. We want them to be uh, concise and brief, um, but be able to answer the questions that folks may have. Um, and so we are excited today, as I shared earlier, to discuss a little bit about um, our dairy customer outreach and those initiatives that, that really come, you know, why folks care about what we're doing on the farm. Um, and so probably first thing to kick it off, you know, uh, Angela, if you want to start off by just sharing, whenever we talk about dairy customers, who are we referring to? That's a great question. And for clarity, when we say dairy customer, we're talking about food service, retail, major restaurant brands, CPG, which is your consumer packaged goods. Um, that is who we're talking about. They are essentially are the ones that are purchasing dairy products and they're influencing the marketplace as well. So think of the McDonald's, the Walmarts, the Kraft Heinzes of the world. And that's who we really focus on as that dairy customer. And for our work specifically, we really work to have a targeted list of customers that we work with each year. And as part of our strategy, we reflect and we think about who are food industry um, trendsetters, who are disruptors, that really fit in with our overall strategy. We take into consideration the current sales ranks, um, overall dairy sales impact. Um, we think about, are they an industry leader? Are they an influencer? Maybe they're already a dairy partner with us. And what is their domestic and global presence? And what is our potential when it comes to dairy sustainability? For us, we really wanna ensure that these conversations that we're having with them are not only impactful, but are gonna be something that's gonna be critically important to keeping our farmers in business and ensuring that dairy is either on the plate or in the marketplace with them. Yeah, a follow-up to that, maybe for you, Josh, and you know, this is probably one of the most popular questions we get as the farm staff is, you know, why do customers care what's going on at the farm level? Why is it so important to them? Why are they asking questions of us as an industry? Well, I think nowadays people want to know where the food comes from, you know, how the food is raised, produced, and sourced. Uh, there's a report that we like to highlight quite a bit. Um, it's from the Hartman Group noted that 81% uh, of global consumers said that it's uh, very or extremely important that companies implement a program to help the environment. Uh, and we all know that the consumers are spending more with their dollar. Uh, companies are trying to listen. Uh, is evidence that by their, their sales, like Angela had iterated, that uh, they try to look at the rankings, how they uptick in their purchases. 
uh, what's the most profitable item, uh, what's the best opportunities for them to meet their commitments and goals. Uh, they also do this through their sourcing guidelines and stakeholder commitments in their CSR or ESG reports. Um, they also take a look at products and how they source them from a risk mitigation standpoint. They're interested in this because they're trying to understand the risk of uh, sourcing dairy from you to the brands and the consumers. Um, so those would be some areas to why companies are, are interested in dairy. And speaking a little towards that, you know, Angela, what are the wins we can take away? You know, farmers are going out, they're participating in the farm program areas, they're meeting those standards, they're writing those protocols, working with their veterinarians. What value is in that? What's that full circle model? How are customers finding value? What wins can we take away from that? You bet. Uh, you know what? I'll start and then I'll kick it off to Josh and we'll kind of tag team in this area. I think it's very safe overall to say that customers are really supportive of the farm animal care program. We have strong adoption and we have interest in this area. I think about our top customers that we work with every year. So your Walmarts, your McDonald's, your Dunkin' Donuts, um, Target, Starbucks, Costco, all of them have made it as part of their sourcing requirements that 100% um, of their dairy is being sourced by farms that are enrolled in the farm animal care program. And I think that is just a gold standard for these companies is they have trust in not only is the program being developed right um, scientifically, academically, but the way it's being executed um, as well. The fact that 99% of our domestic uh, fluid supply is through the farm program is critically important to our customers. We have also had a long history, if things don't go right, we do have a process in place to really investigate, understand, and develop next steps for not only that customer to feel confident in their supply chain, but really to look at that supply chain and see if there's areas for improvement as a whole. You know, one of the areas that we spent a lot of time just a couple of years ago was a very targeted, I would say, campaign around pole genetics and with one of our activist groups. Um, I would say this is a good indication of how strong our relationships were that many of those customers reached out to us directly, both through the farm program and through DMI, to really understand like what is our third party perspective on this and can we be a resource and you know is what they're hearing is it true and factual. And we were really quickly able to, I would say, partner together as an industry and work across all these customers to help them understand really what is the tap of the industry, what's the current status, what are the possibilities for next steps forward, and get them in a comfortable place that I think continues to benefit you know, our dairy farmers. We know that good animal care and milk quality absolutely go hand in hand as well. And unfortunately, you know, one of the questions we also get a lot is, you know, when are we going to get paid for this? You know, this is really a, I would say, not necessarily a cost of business, this is a cost of future business. We are, we are past this point, you know, being a part of the farm program or executing in these areas, really ensure you're having that future contract and future opportunities really to stay in business. But we do have two areas that we've really seen growth, I would say, and shifts in, and that would be an environmental stewardship and really that human rights workforce development side as well, which, you know, poses a great question. Are we winning? Where are some challenges? And I'll kind of turn it over to Josh to maybe lead, especially in the environmental stewardship side. Yeah, thanks, Angela. Um, as for the environment, Farm ES, uh, this program helps to verify to consumers and customers uh, what practices farmers are doing on the farms, for what reasons and why, you know, it has kind of that long-term impact on the environment. Uh, participating in this program helps, you know, kind of create a story for what dairy farmers are doing and for why. Uh, it does demonstrate that they're stewards of the land, but also sustainability. You know, when me and Angela work with customers that source dairy, you know, they're trying to see how does Farmias fit in within their supply chain? How can it address scope three emissions and also meet their climate goals? Uh, we know sustainability reporting doesn't just start with Farmias. Um, you know, for organizations that are listening a good day, you know, take a look at trends in the marketplace. Where are they going? Uh, what are these practices or ideas? Uh, perhaps learn more from them. See how you can influence it, or maybe you're doing them already. You know, as a farmer, a company, you know, maybe establish a committee or a working group to get ahead of the pressure. Uh, Farm ES is only as good as the organization that is implementing the tool. You know, this is a tool that can be enhanced. I can fit within your supply chain. I can meet regional differences, but also individual needs. Um, so that's kind of my two cents on it. Um, 
you know, kick it over to Angela and talk a little bit more about human rights and, of course, development. Yeah, thanks, Josh. You know, another area that's really emerged in the last three years is this, I would say, wanting to understand the human rights aspect of agriculture as a whole. This is not just a dairy a specific issue. This is all across agriculture. But for dairy, understanding that not only do we care for our animals and the planet, but do we care for the people that work for us as well? It's as simple as that, really. And one thing that the farm program has really allowed to happen is to verify, proof and verify. No one is saying that our farmers aren't doing this. We just haven't had the mechanism in the past to naturally, I would say, um, capture those results and be able to share it out as proof points to that. The one thing that I do absolutely love about that new farm workforce development program, it has really been created to benefit the farmer and the farm workers. Like there's resources for human resources. You know, there's availability on, you know, farm safety and improving these areas. These are things that we're hoping that are value added for our farmers. And it's just not another program area that's being developed. But on the side, this is a critical area for customers. It is one of the areas they continue to ask about. Do we have programming in this area? You know, what are the opportunities? And we know it's a complicated area, especially when it talks about labor laws and policies and wage requirements. That's not something that we're getting into, but instead we've created, and you know, the farm programs create a baseline foundational program that's really focused on HR and human rights. Thinking of that though, you know, think of our coasts. We've got the Northwest, we've got the Northeast, both have, you know, very strong, I would say, interest groups in those areas who absolutely are focused in on human rights. Um, I would say one of the wins, we talk about what's a win, you know, on the Northwest side of the United States, we've been working with um, a large group of retailers and food service companies for the last three years, you know, they've actually reviewed some of the materials while in development of farm workforce development to get them on board and supportive. Like, is there an opportunity to use farm to really focus in in this area? And we also have a major food retailer in the Northeast who is very much working to pilot through their private label brand, the farm workforce development program. And why is this important? The thing about farm is because through animal care, we have so many participants in it, we are able to show that this is a farmer supported, but also a program that is funded by farmers. And it's a program that is something that, you know, hopefully continues to not be a barrier for our farmers in existence. But I'm gonna be really honest, there are other programs in the marketplace that have emerged in these areas. And so we can't, you know, at all, think that it's just farm that's gonna solve these things. So it does take enrollment, it takes participation, and that's something that we strongly encourage to happen. But we're excited for these areas. Customers are super supportive of how farm has continued to grow. And I would say the fact that they are looking at environmental stewardship and human rights on there, and they're looking at farm and the dairy industry to kind of lead in these areas, shows that these are great programs that they have a lot of confidence in. Um, those were all fantastic points, you know, just to put a few plugs in there. If you if folks listening in, if you represent a co-op or a processor, or if you're someone in leadership at one of those organizations and you have questions that come from your, your uh, buyers or your customers, please reach out to, to us as the farm team and we'll connect you with Angela Josh or reach out to them directly uh, so that they can help and assist and, and try to connect the dots from their vast experience that they have. The other thing, um, these two talked a little bit about our uh, newest program areas, environmental stewardship and workforce development. So please be sure if you have questions about those or curious about the resources that they reference to check out our website um, to find that plethora and arsenal of resources that we work to create. Um, Josh, can you speak a little bit about how customers incorporate that support for the farm program when they're appreciative and they recognize the work that dairy farmers are doing? How do they show that support? Yeah, when me and Angela work, we try to get support. Uh, you know, one avenue would be to be a, a farm brand supporter on the National Producers Farm Program website. Uh, they can put it in their sourcing requirements if it's their supplier code of conduct in the contract. Uh, we always like to see uh, companies also highlight it into the website. Um, you know, also then, the, you know, organizations have gotten verified that, you know, co-ops or milk suppliers are participating in the farm program and that they're in good standings. 
and, and probably I keep saying these are big questions because they are all this is a lot of where our question rightfully so comes from from folks stakeholders involved in the industry but but probably I keep saying the biggest one but this probably is the biggest one um, are folks curious about what's next what are cu customers concerned about now um, you know what's coming down the pike where can we be answering and finding those further assurances for those dairy customers well, you know, when me and Angela look at it, he's looking at trends and what goes on. We know milk quality and animal care are going to be a given. Um, you know, human rights, uh, worker workforce development are up there. Um, you've probably been seeing uh, reports come out from the IPCC um, in regards to climate. Um, you see a lot of articles on climate, weather patterns changing. So I think climate is going to be a big one here coming forward. Can I add one thing on there? Um, what, one thing I think is really critically important to understand is we are not out there trying to push additional programs and creating different programs. Like, I think that's one thing the farm program's done an outstanding job is if there is a deficit area to help build in that, but also looking for partnerships across. The fact that the farm animal care program is ISO certified and now PACO certified as well. These are acronyms that are critical for verification and validation to our customer lens. So the fact that the farm program encompasses that, it's like an awesome check the box for them that why would we look at something else because you already have everything needed um, within this program. And pretty much for both ISO and PACO, really nothing was added to those programs to meet that. It was really based off the standards, the high standards that were already there. So I just want people to feel confident that these programs have already been built and developed and we're looking for ways to get them externally validated and supported. And so you're not looking at having, you know, three, four other programs that you have to do as well to still have a contract with your customers. Um, and I've had a few questions come in to me through the chat and there's one in the Q&A. So folks listening in, please take this time to, to add in those questions if you'd like them addressed here in the next couple of minutes. The, the first one, Josh, maybe if you can speak to kind of encompassing what you did in your prior life um, at a co-op is whenever those customers and um, and whoever has those supply chain surveys or questionnaires, what specifically from the farm program do can we provide to them um, to, to be able to answer those questions? What kind of data and aggregated data is that? Um, you know, that's a good question. You know, when you get these surveys in, I would say almost aggregate those surveys and see what the overall themes and trends are. Then, you know, utilize the farm program database. There's been significant improvements with Neva Insight to, uh, you know, fix uh, data management and how to pull reports out of there. So I think the farm program team does a very good job. So I would try to rely on them to be allies and resources to try to fill out some of those uh, surveys. Um, you know, with that, you know, look at those things too. And if you keep on seeing them each year, maybe you should look at them in, uh, you know, your membership, uh, you know, work with your suppliers, uh, and even work locally with pricing programs that can meet some of the needs for your farmers. We look at those trends though too, right, Josh? Like we look, if a cooperative shares a survey, like are we starting to see reoccurring themes, meaning a customer has some severe questions about something that we're not addressing correctly or is there confusion about how you're trying to access survey information that maybe we could simplify in the way the farm program is written? So we, we not only you know, work to help you as a dairy cooperative or a farmer answer these questions, we also look for those trends to get a better understanding. Is there confusion in the marketplace and where can we focus? It's just and, and just to add a, a piece of clarity or, or, you know, again, to bring it back to full circle, how this kind of impacts all facts of supply chain, you know, when those second party evaluations specifically on animal care are conducted, um, that data is collected and entered into our uh, protected farm database, then um, those co-ops and processors have the ability to share that aggregated data. So not um, that that's their data that's owned by that farm participant who are our co-ops and processors. And then also a side note that you as a, farmer, as a farmer have access, unlimited access to the data that's pulled from your farm. Just always remember that that is how that information process works. Um, either one of you guys want to take this next one, whoever whoever's feeling uh, froggy. Um, you know, if you have any advice, if someone is um, maybe dealing with uh, a customer who they're, 
their marketing and their communications folks want to say one thing, but their procurement folks are kind of on a different page. What's your advice to folks that want to connect those two or how they should manage and try to close the gap there? Um, yeah. <laughs> Josh, do you want to take the first stab and I can add on if needed? Yeah, I, I think it's just breaking down barriers. I, I think especially in sustainability, I've liked it so much because you can wear many different hats. So I think there's always an avenue to get in those discussions with procurement or marketing in regards to, you know, animal care. Um, I just think you need to find out, you know, what's the need and want um, and try to figure out how to approach it correctly. Uh, in regards to even contracts or communicating it, because I, I think at the end of the day, people, like I said, they want to know where their food comes from. It could be through a sustainability report. You can highlight animal care and, and create a pamphlet or a booklet or a report and give it to your marketing people. Your marketing people can go out and maybe you know, sell those programs to you're selling dairy products to it. It goes very handy. Um, then you just have you know quarterly conversations and once a year. And also as a reminder, it's really normal for people across the sector in a customer to not know each other. We spend a lot of time making introductions to the sustainability team, to the procurement team, to the communications team. Um, I would say that's more normal than not. And so if you can even do that in your role um, when having those conversations, it's all for the betterment at the end of the day. So you can get everyone on that same page, um, especially when it comes to the dairy sourcing and supply requirements and how it fits and where farm can really excel, I would say in those areas is great. And if you need help, that's where Josh and I absolutely can come in. You know, send us an email or we're happy to sometimes make those introductions. We're happy to be a fly on the wall if you would like us to as well. Um, just lead us in whatever direction that you need for support and help when it comes to your customers. Thanks. Um, and this next question, it probably is going to need a little more explanation from you guys as well. I had a question that asked about how we help the dairy industry or how the dairy industry helps food companies have confidence to set scope three goals to help them better connect to dairy and where their food is sourced. So if you want to start with explaining what scope three goals are and then answer the question, that would be great. Yeah, like maybe real simple, like your scope one for a customer is really like their like store areas. Scope two is like the next like transportation and everything else that touches with them. And then scope three is really where, where they're sourcing. It's their supply on that area. So for dairy, dairy is really a scope three. And we have some tremendous opportunities, guys. Farm ES, actually the environmental stewardship program, it has one of those fancy endorsements. It's WRI endorsed, which essentially means um, customers could use that data to help report into their scope three admissions. Uh, Farm Environmental Stewardship is also part of the U.S. Dairy Stewardship Commitment, which is another social, social responsibility assurance to um, our stakeholders that, you know, our cooperatives and processors that are a part of it, you know, are committed in these different areas. But um, there is an opportunity for dairy to really excel in this area. But I, I'll be candid, you know, customers, just as all of us, are still trying to figure out their goals and trying to figure out where everyone falls into play. So the more that we can bring solutions to the table right away is really important. That allows us to set the stage directionally where we want to go. And that can't just be Josh and I or some of our other colleagues. It really goes a long ways when a cooperative or a, another dairy stakeholder, a state and region, or a pharmaceutical company can go in as well and say, you know, the dairy industry does have tools to help you on this. Make sure you're talking with them and they can be a part of that solution. Yeah, we have a colleague and he works in a scope three space in GHG and targets and goals. But uh, he said basically, you know, a lot of these companies are creating commitments and goals. It's kind of like flying a plane and building it at the same time. So just, just a good piece there. Thanks for that. The last question I'm seeing, so if, if anybody has any additional questions, please chat them into me or put them in the Q&A box. Um, maybe if you guys could speak a little bit to why or how um, so customers are able to ask for things additional beyond farm. Why farm may not be good enough, why, why there's additional asks that are coming or good enough in their opinion, I guess. Yeah, that's great. Um, so Every couple of years, things shift within customers and what they're looking to do and looking to achieve. And I would say for us as an industry, 
the fact that farm can be a baseline for entrance into the marketplace with them is a huge win as a whole. Um, customers are very much looking to tell a story and unfortunately they're building their own narrative. And so for them, sometimes they are looking for additional questions because they're trying to build the story narrative that they can share out with their consumers. But if they're using farm as that baseline and they're asking a few additional questions, that's still a huge win. It's not additional audits. It's not additional things coming into the marketplace, but it is that opportunity for us to keep reinforcing our great standards, but helping them shape that story as well. Josh, do you have thoughts too? No, I think you uh, summed it up very well. I mean, it's not, it's not a surprise. I mean, it's something we've seen in the marketplace. Let's be clear though, customers do realize how rigorous this is, but they are trying to market to a very specific consumer now. And some of those consumers um, are all over the place and what their interests are. So they are really creating, you know, they are marketing to their consumer to keep growing their consumer base. Uh, we just want to ensure that farm is part of that. Thank you guys. Thank you both um, for willing, being willing to share your Wednesday afternoon with us and share your knowledge. Um, as a reminder to everyone, this session is recorded. It will be posted on our webpage. Uh, so feel free that if you'd like to share it out to um, other colleagues afterwards or go back and watch the recording, you're able to do that. You can also find Angela and Josh's contact information on our website staff page as well. Just a reminder, again, for next week's quick conversation, or next month, excuse me, conversation will be September 22nd. Uh, it is Farm Safety Week that week, so we will be doing a safety spotlight. Be sure to tune in at 2 p.m. Eastern for that. And with that, uh, thank you everyone for joining us. There's our information if you're looking to find out more information about the farm program.